we are pressing the red button. Bam, 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 bam. We are live on YouTube, that's what's up. Let's go live on Facebook. Let's go live on Mixer. Let's go live on Periscope. Let's go live on Twitch. Let's go live on all avenues. Let's fire at all cylinders today, because today's gonna be a good day. Today's gonna be a great day to live stream, to create content, and to do what we love to do for a living. That's what this is all about. Welcome to the live stream, my friends, every day, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. My name is Andrew Wall. I'm the co-founder of the number one YouTube gaming network out there. Gino, thank you for joining. It's great to see you on Periscope. And welcome to all of you. This is a live stream where I'm going to kick it off at the very beginning and tell you all about how to reach 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. We're gonna kick things off and tell the story of TGN Anime, which is about to break into the 100,000 subscriber mark. Uh, with my team, uh, we've been able to do this over the uh, last year. And so I wanna tell the story of how we got there, the things we learned along the way, and this is a growth story of how this channel grew uh, from the 2017 into 2018 era of YouTube. I want to share with you uh, best practices, I want to share with you tips, I want to share with you content strategy, uh, things like thumbnail and title strategy, so that you can learn from what uh, my team has been able to do to become successful uh, through this channel and use it for your channel so that you can reach that 100,000 subscriber mark yourself. And if you already reached the 100,000 subscriber mark, there's a lot of things that are I'm going to include here in this advice uh, that you can apply to uh, your channel, even if you're beyond the 100,000 subscriber uh, kind of milestone. And once you, obviously, once you hit that 100,000 subscriber mark, you can get that YouTube uh, Creator Award, which I have on my, um, thumbnail on YouTube. I think the Creator Award's pretty cool. Just keep in mind that the 100,000 subscriber mark is the, or the Creator Awards rather, it's more of a vanity item than anything else. And getting that silver Creator button is nice. Getting the silver Creator button feels good. It's something cool to put on your wall, but the kind of uh, shine, I guess you could say, of that Creator button wears off quickly and at the end of the day when it comes to uh, building your business and when it comes to uh, actually growing revenue and when it comes to being able to do what you want to do for a living um, the creator button doesn't really do any of that it's just something nice to put on your wall kind of like a uh, printed out version of a college degree that you put on your wall it's like great I accomplished that but at the end of the day for example, just like after you get a college degree, you actually have to go out and go get a job. And you actually have to outperform people in the workforce. And you actually have to go make money. And you actually have to learn new professional skills. You have to enter the workforce, etc., etc. And so just keep in mind that getting that Silver Creator Award button is awesome. It's a really cool thing. Um, to have happen um, and you know as in you always have something to look forward to with getting the gold button at a million subs and of course that wonderful diamond button or the PewDiePie button beyond that nobody's hit the 50 million mark but him but just keep in mind that it is entirely a vanity item and the appeal of it wears off quickly uh, at broadband TV headquarters we've got a number of them on the wall for channels that I've worked on in the past and those you know, it was cool to take a picture with him, it was cool to take a look at it and to give the team a high five, like tell the team, good job, you did this. It was the editors, it was the hosts, it was, you know, everybody behind this channel, it was the business, it was the organization, everybody contributed to getting that button. But at the end of the day, it wore off quickly and we had to get back to work. So keep in mind, once you get that button, you haven't made it, I guess is the whole point of this part of the rant. Uh, you just got, a, uh, a nice pat on the back from YouTube. You got a nice pat on the back from the universe uh, telling you that you did a pretty good job, but uh, yo kid, get back to work and keep making some great videos. If you guys are in chat right now, speak up. Who all is watching right now? Let me hear you in chat. Um, so let me go ahead and dive into some of the uh, important insights that we learned from um, growing this channel. And you guys should take notes on these. I know that this is going to be a bit of a longer rant but I can promise you uh, that it is absolutely worth your time uh, to, to check out what I'm about to tell you. Cool? Okay, 
So let's talk about the TGN Anime channel. So the TGN Anime channel is, um, I wonder if uh, notifications went off on YouTube or not. Are you guys seeing this being notifying you on YouTube? Because I'm not seeing people showing up on YouTube. I wonder if it's broken or something like that. Um, no, it looks like it's public. It looks like we're live. Um, I don't know why it's not notifying people. That's super, super weird. Ah, I don't know. Here we go. Now people are showing up. Beautiful. All right. So, TGN Anime is the channel. So it's about to break over that 100,000 subscriber mark, and within the next few days, we'll hit it. So if you look at Social Blade for this channel, um, the channel is currently getting 1.7 million views per month, which is fantastic, and it's getting um, 7,000 subscribers per month. So this is a really good growth rate on this channel that we're working on. And before I get into this, um, I'm not here to take credit uh, for all of the work, the hard work that the team's done. That's not what I'm doing. I'm gonna be talking about the strategy uh, behind what's working on this channel. I've been advising on the strategy, I've been advising the team, and um, Luis Martins is the man behind the scenes here, Globku, and also he's got a number of folks in um, Portugal that have been helping him, uh, editors, uh, as well as a team and a studio that we built in Portugal that have been helping him as well, and Jonathan Moxness has helped him accomplish this. So at the growth rate of 7,000, we'll be at 100,000 subscribers on this channel shortly. And the whole point of showing you Social Blade isn't to brag, it's to show you that the channel's about to break over the 100K mark. So this is the best example I can show you of the journey, I guess you could say, to hit 100K. And so what you're gonna see here in these analytics, and let me go ahead and zoom in here, is right before, and this is something that I want you guys to keep in mind, this was an older YouTube channel that we took over, uh, and right here you're gonna see a dip where we unlisted a lot of the older videos, and that mark is gonna be right about here. And we unlisted a lot of the older videos that were not relevant to this new topic. Good morning, Late Sleeper, it's great to see you. You'll catch up on the video later. Uh, you have problems at work? All right, Late Sleeper, good luck. Good luck with your problems at work. Um, so we had a dip here where we unlisted a bunch of content, and then um, over the course of the next uh, few months, we started releasing anime content. Uh, Bryston, congratulations on our success so far. Thank you very much, Bryston. Thank you for joining in uh, um, Periscope chat. It's great to see our friends in Periscope come to the stream today. Um, but here we go. So at this mark, it was negative 39 subscribers per month, and we had negative 9 million views. We unlisted a bunch of content. So we were essentially starting from scratch with this channel at that moment. And what our thinking was, and as you can see from this moment in 2017, we ended up peaking uh, and we ended up growing quickly to getting 5,000 subscribers per month in just a few months. And this is thanks to the work of my amazing team. And, uh, you know, we're going to talk about the thought process that, that led us to this moment. And so what we did initially is we were thinking for this anime channel, we were, we're going to do an overall anime channel, we were thinking. And, but we're not exactly sure how to be successful with anime content. So what we did is we decided, you know what, we're gonna, going to, in part, do content about maybe movies on one side, and then maybe games on the other side here. Uh, with anime content. We're not sure, you know, is the TV show content going to be successful? Is the gaming content going to be successful? We started the channel in an experimental phase. And this goes for all of you guys out there that are trying to break from the low mark into the 100,000 subscriber mark is the whole point of me telling you that is be open to experimentation. Be open to different types of content. And if you look at the most successful content on this channel over time, most of it is gaming channel, but gaming content, but some of it here uh, ended up being some of this TV show or movie content that we were covering like uh, this video right here, for example, where we were covering like the dumbest things in Attack on Titan season two. But the rest of it, all of these videos are all gaming videos, right? So what we did initially is we researched what is the most popular stuff within anime. Right? And so, of course, we use Google Trends. Google Trends is your friend. Uh, FNA Lou, it's great to see you in chat. You're at 200 subscribers right now. That's fantastic. And you're talking about 100,000. Well, 
just like I showed you in this example, uh, this channel was getting negative 39 subs, one negative 166 subscribers per month, and within one, two, three, four months, was getting 6,000 subscribers per month. Uh, you weren't looking at that. 6,000 subscribers per month in four months. So I'm about to explain to you exactly how we did that. So people that um, you know are. You know, thinking, oh, uh, maybe it's years down the road for me to hit thousands. Look, negative 166, one, two, three, four, six thousand in one month, okay? This isn't some, like, fluke. This isn't some miracle that happened. This is the real deal. This is the real strategy I'm explaining to you right now and the thought process that went behind it. Uh, Zhang, it's great to see you in Periscope chat. And Sule KBR is wanting us to wanting me to help you. Can you more specifically say how I can help you? Of course, these streams are all about uh, helping um, small creators and uh, creators of all sizes. Great. So what we did is we researched all of the big anime properties. So initially, and everybody does this right out the gate, a lot of people do this right out the gate on their new channel, they're thinking, what is the most popular stuff that I can cover on my channel? If stuff is more popular, then it makes it more likely that I'm going to grow fast, right? So, what we did is we locked and loaded the biggest anime IP. Dragon Ball, Naruto, One Piece, Sword Art, on, uh, Sword Art Attack on Titan. And we loaded them up into Google Trends, we selected YouTube Search and Worldwide, and we took a look at what was big. And what we noticed, of course, is that Dragon Ball and Naruto were the two biggest kind of overall IPs uh, and the biggest overall trends. So we thought, you know what I'm, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna cover the TV shows. We're gonna cover the IP. We're gonna cover Dragon Ball in general, maybe the top moments from the show. We're gonna cover Naruto in general, the upcoming season, and we're gonna do a lot of content around the actual shows because that's how this anime content, uh, these anime IPs, got big, right? makes sense. We ended up testing that on the channel and a lot of that content really didn't get uh, that much traction. And if you look at the older content, you know, just because a overall trend uh, was, uh, you know, big, doesn't mean that you're going to get bigger results from it. Sierra St. John just joined on Periscope chat. It's great to see you. Um, uh, there's a couple questions here from chat, so let me answer a couple of those questions and I'll continue to tell the story of how TG and Anime reached one, uh, uh, 100,000 100, subscribers. But the question is here, um, FNA Lou says, really, maybe you'll be there in that long? Um, if you have the right strategy and if you listen to what I'm saying right now and you can apply these ideas to your channel, you can get thousands of subscribers per month. You can do it. Uh, so Sisbro asks, hey Andrew, are the Social Blade predictions accurate? So he's referring to these um, predictive numbers here at the top of Social Blade. So a lot of you guys probably look at Social Blade to take a look at stats and what have you. And, um, you know, there are future predictions. There's a future predictions tab. Let's take a look. So a lot of this stuff is just based on like ice cold numbers. And it's based on, you know, your current growth rate in like a very rudimentary prediction algorithm or prediction equation. So I would say that they are somewhat accurate, but not super accurate, basically. And these predictions don't necessarily, uh, when it's predicting your subscribers here and it's predicting your views here, they don't necessarily predict, let's say, the popularity of trends that you're covering and what's going to be happening with them in the future and it can't predict those sorts of things. All it can do is just take a look at your current numbers and your current growth rate and the current uh, rate at which you're acquiring views and subscribers and just give you a rudimentary prediction of uh, future success based on current performance. So therefore, I do not think that Social Blade predictions are very accurate at all. And I would also warn you guys that, uh, and you guys probably know, a lot of creators know, these estimated monthly earnings are just this wide range that is just ridiculous. Like, what does that even mean? This channel is making anywhere between $428 per month to $6,900 per month. That is such a wide variance of possibilities for this channel because it can't identify where the views are coming from and it's not very good at identifying which vertical those views are in and so therefore it's not good at identifying what the 
CPM or RPM predictions would be for that particular channel. So I would tell you that social blade blade predictions are not very good to answer your question. Um, uh, do, 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 do. Okay, beautiful. So let's see, let's continue the story of TGN anime. So what we did, uh, what the team did and what um, we did as a team, we looked at these movie trends and these overall show trends and we tried making content about the overall anime trend. And that content was super hit or miss in the early stages of the channel. But through the process of experimentation and doing a content mix between talking about the TV shows, the movies, and the IP, and the games, and taking a look at the upcoming games, what we discovered, what Luis discovered, what John discovered, and what the team discovered, is that the gaming content that we were doing around anime actually ended up being far more successful than the main content about the actual series. Despite the fact that Dragon Ball overall and Naruto overall are way more popular than the video games about those IP on YouTube, the gaming content that we were doing was getting a lot more traction. And so this is a combination of factors that you guys need to take into consideration. So many of you are saying, I need to, I need to make content about Fortnite. I need to make content about PUBG. I need to do a reaction video of the KSI versus Logan Paul fight. I need to talk about this big trending thing that just happened. I need to talk about the latest drama. I need to do a cooking video that is, you know, the latest cooking trend because that's the most popular thing. The point of me showing you this example of the big IP versus the niche is the phrase that is super cheesy but is super true. The riches are in the niches, they say, and um, it's absolutely true. If you can find the niche within the popular topic, if you can find the subtopic within the main topic that has lower competition and that is being underserved and doesn't have all value being provided to it that the audience wants, then you can start to truly grow your channel. And that's what we ended up doing uh, during this earlier transition. We, the channel was kind of floundering a bit in the beginning, not really getting that much traction here in the very, very beginning because we were covering the overall IPs. But once there was more of a gaming mix, and once these games started being released, then the channel started really getting mega views and started really taking off. And so that's a big reason why I tell you guys, use the 80-20 rule. No matter what you're doing, okay, in the very beginning of your channel, you should use a 50-50 rule. You should use a full experimentation philosophy with the type of content that you're producing. Pick the overall arcing topic. Pick the overarching subject that you're gonna be covering. In this case, we knew that we wanted to do content around anime. We weren't positive what kind of anime content that we wanted to make, but we knew it was gonna be some kind of anime content. Then within anime or within your topic, cooking or magic or gaming or whatever you're doing, experiment big time in the very early phases when you're getting negative subscribers or tiny subscribers to see what sticks. Once you discover what sticks, implement the 80-20 rule that I'm constantly talking about. And that's 80% the content that sticks and then 20% continuing to experiment after that to discover new trends and discover new items. And so once our team discovered, once Luis and John and the team discovered that uh, specific games were taking off on this channel, then those games became staple games for the channel. And then in the 20% block, we continued to experiment with content about the TV shows and the movies and other games, etc. So, full experimentation and early phases. Once you find something that works, make that 80% of your content slate and then reserve 20% for the rest of time to continue to experiment with new content types. With that philosophy, we were able to take the TGN anime channel from small traction in the beginning to getting bigger traction and then continued growth and continued performance over time. The 80-20 rule proved to be relevant in 2017 and 2018. Um, be, and that's this is like one of those cases of that being true. Um, FNA Lou says, does my channel look like an attractive channel? 
I'm open to do a lot of things. I see very little growth in your videos. Um, okay, hey, oh my gosh, Cyber Cheese is here. Wonderful, it's great to see Cyber Cheese in chat. Good to see you. Um, so really quick, let's take a look at FNA Lou's channel. Um, I, like, can you, really quick, can you just say like, something more specific that you want us to, like saying, is my channel an attractive channel, is a very generic thing to ask. That's like saying, how can I get more views? Or how can I get more subs? Can you ask a more specific question? And then I'm happy to answer your more specific question. And speaking of which, I've got a number of patrons that have asked me a lot of questions that we're gonna answer on the stream today, including uh, Ezra Slayton. We're gonna give one of those pa what, that patron some feedback on his thumbnails. And we're also going to give Sisbros some feedback on his live streaming setup. So I'm gonna want all of you guys to uh, help provide feedback there. And really quick, I want to play the notification. I don't know if Spooby is here, but uh, I'll go ahead and hit the button and come on. There we go. Spooby, uh, over the course of the night, he became one of my new coaching patrons at the $25 level. So thank you very much, Spooby. I don't know if you're in chat right now on YouTube, but thank you very much for becoming one of my patrons. I'm looking forward to doing a legendary channel review for you later. So thank you very much for your support. You're up on the A Wall of Fame right over here. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it. So let's continue to talk about the TGN anime story and things you can learn from this channel. So the really important thing that all of you guys need to remember is once you find a topic that's working for you on your channel using Google Trends, constantly be looking at related subtopics on Google Trends every single day, in my opinion. Every day I'm on my phone looking for upcoming games. I'm looking for upcoming trends. And I'm punching them into Google Trends to see what their patterns are. How much hype is there at the announcement? How many views are there on YouTube once, um, you know, once the marketing comes out, et cetera, et cetera. These are things that you need to be constantly looking at. And so here, as an anime gaming channel, I have, we have Dragon Ball Fighter Z, Naruto, Shinobi Striker, Dragon Ball Legends, One Hero, One's Justice, Sword Art Online, etc. And there's other games that you would input here to continue to do research. ID, thank you for joining on Periscope. It's great to see you. So, always be looking at additional trends in the future to cover. Now the 80% rule that we're using here on the channel in the bread and butter content on uh, TGN Anime is of course, uh, Dragon, excuse me. Um, let me stop selecting the um, most popular videos and we'll take a look at the more recent videos. Right now, we're covering um, extra content around My Hero One's Justice. Uh, Naruto Shinobi Striker is one of the big titles right now, and obviously Dragon Ball Fighter Z has been uh, a big title. So I would say that those are our 80% content. Nairobi, uh, not Nairobi, Naruto Shinobi Striker and Dragon Ball Fighter Z has been our 80, and then our 20 is expanding into other games and constantly looking at new things to cover. I asked Luis, for example, on the channel, can you do some Dragon Ball Legends content just to see how it performs? He was like, eh, I guess so. I don't really want to, but sure. And the whole point is of that comment is to force yourself to test new games. Force yourself to test new topics because you never know if one of them is going to hit hard on your channel. And the reason why it will hit hard on your channel is because there may be low competition for that term and there may be low competition within that subtopic and that might be your chance to capitalize. Or if there's high competition, it's possible that you'll be providing either new value, best value, unique value, challenge value, or learning value within that topic and then you'll end up beating out your competitors because you're providing new content value that other channels are not. And so that's a big philosophy that you guys need to remember. And I keep talking about this 80-20. I keep talking about this experimentation. This is the main way to grow your channel from small to big is through this experimentation process. Almost all small channels that ask me, what should I do on my channel? How do I get more views? How do I get more subs? Is what I'm doing good? And I look and they're just doing the same thing over and over and over again that's not working. 
the same thumbnails over and over again that are not working, the same titles over and over again that are not working, the same mix of topics or games over and over again that are not working. And so you're asking, what advice can you give to me? Well, why haven't you changed what you're doing? first before you start asking people for advice and feel free to come ask for advice but a lot of people are like i want to do this certain type of content and it should just work and the answer to that is no you may want to do a certain topic but you may have to change the way you approach that topic and the way that you do a content mix on your channel and you need to be constantly experimenting in order to make your channel grow like the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result. So more times than not, when people come to me and they ask me for advice on how to grow from that, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000, whatever mark, I advise people that are at 700,000 subs right now, for example. And the main value that I'm providing them is giving them research justification giving them uh, strategic justification, uh, numbers justification, uh, market justification, and uh, thumbnail title and metadata justification to help push them to change what they're doing. <laughs> That's why channels die. That's why channels don't grow, is because they don't change and they don't evolve. The biggest YouTubers constantly reinvent themselves every couple months. They completely wipe their content slate clean regularly. They completely change their thumbnail and title strategy all the time. Look at PewDiePie as a great example of that. That's why they're big. That's why they're beating you. The YouTube algorithm changes millions of times every single day based on every action that every user is using on the platform through machine learning. So if you're not changing constantly, you're losing, and the people that are changing constantly are winning. That is the key to success as a small channel. I'm not joking. It truly is that simple. Cool, so let's go ahead and um, answer some patron questions right now, and then we can go revisit the 100,000 subscribers topic right after that. But I wanna make sure we get to these patron questions. Like Charlie McShane was asking me, what are the most important steps to take at the 5,000 subscriber, 10,000 subscriber, 50,000 subscriber, and then 100,000 subscriber mark. So I don't think that there are any steps to take at any of one of those subscriber marks because the number of subscribers that you have is pretty much irrelevant. Sorry, it just is. It doesn't matter how many subscribers you have, it matters what your average views per video is and how engaged your community is as to whether you can take the next step on your channel. The number of subs you have is basically a vanity number that is totally meaningless. I was talking about this at the beginning of the stream. It doesn't matter if you have 100K subs, it doesn't matter if you have a million subs, it doesn't matter if you have 10 million subs. Those are vanity numbers that mean essentially nothing. What actually means something on YouTube is your average views per video and how engaged your community is. So, when you're moving into a stage where let's say you're getting 5,000 average views per video, or you're getting 10,000 average views per video, that means that you have a consistent community, a consistent audience that's revisiting your content. It doesn't matter how many subs you have. It's just completely irrelevant how many subscribers you have. I, there are channels out there that have millions of subscribers that only get 5,000 views per video. So the number of subs you have is irrelevant, okay? So you have five to 10,000 subscribers per video. At that point, or five to 10,000 views per video, that means that you can now transition into diversifying your revenue because you've got a large enough community on your channel that will actually support you. And so at that point, that's when I would start considering at the five to 10,000 views per video average mark, transitioning into selling things like merchandise, launching a Patreon, and uh, running an affiliate program, and really focusing on those revenue generating things 
that help diversify your revenue beyond where you're currently at. At that point, you're able to have a large enough audience to where you can diversify your business and you can start to grow your revenue so that you can upgrade your business. You can upgrade your equipment. You can invest more into advertising. You can invest more into giveaways for your community, invest more into subscription software services to produce better content. 5,000 views per video to 10,000 views per video, generally speaking on YouTube, is that mark where you can start to turn the knobs, it looks like I'm turning the knobs here, turn the knobs and start diversifying that revenue and growing that revenue. Okay, so that's the important mark there. So on TJ and Anime, for example, started growing revenue by launching a Patreon, uh, as well as a um, channel memberships service on the channel, launching a Discord, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And that's because the community was large enough to where the effort that you put into doing something like this actually can pay off. If you have a tiny community and you're getting like less than a thousand views per video and you're not providing a specialized service through your videos like I'm doing, then how, how is the time you're investing into Patreon, how is the time you're investing into something like this actually going to be worth it for you? And the answer to that is, it's not going to be. So don't diversify uh, heavily and don't invest too much time into diversifying revenue on your channel until uh, you have a large enough community to support that diversification. You'll hear a lot of other YouTube experts out there tell you, diversify your revenue on day one and do affiliate on day one and run channel memberships on day one. And I would tell you, don't do that. That is a waste of your time. Those people are wrong. They forgot what it's like to be a small YouTuber and to have limited time to have a full-time job, to go to school, and to deal with life while you're doing YouTube and streaming on the side. Don't do that, okay? That's gonna be counter to probably what 90% of YouTube coaches and creator coaches out there will tell you. Stop diversifying your revenue super, super early. That is a terrible idea. When you're tiny, there's no need to diversify your revenue right out the gate, sorry. Echo Gaming is just checking in from work. Good to see you, Echo Gaming. Thank you for joining the live stream. And if any of you guys have questions, Feel free to drop them and echo your boy Spooby HD just became uh, recently, I mean, he's on there twice, but he just became one of my $25 patrons. It's great to see Echo here, one of those grinders who started diversifying his revenue once his community was large enough to do so. So a lot of people are like, let me push channel memberships. Let me try to get super chats. Let me try to get some donos when you're getting less than a thousand views per video. And that is just a waste of your time. Invest your time in growing your audience first to a certain level, 5,000 to 10,000 views per video or so, and then you can diversify properly. That's just a general rule I like to use. Beautiful, so that's my best answer to the what should I do with the 5,000, 10,000, 50,000, 100,000 subscriber mark. Don't, it doesn't matter how many subscribers you have. It matters how big your audience is and how, uh, and how invested they are in you to diversify your revenue and to diversify your online business. Next question here is from Ezra Slayton and I want you guys to participate. Uh, yeah, late sleeper also. Yeah, the boys are valuing what I do. I know, it's great to see both of them uh, become a part of my patron community. It's fantastic. And if any of you guys are on Mixer, on Twitch, on Periscope, on Facebook as well, speak up in chat. I want to see who's watching right now. Feel free to ans ask your questions. Dark Chiron is asking a question. Uh, something you've been wondering about is whether you feel it's easier to get traction streaming on YouTube or Twitch. Yeah, so that's a great question. I made an entire video about that. So let me go ahead and pull up the video and I'll link it to you in chat where you can get a bit more of an in-depth analysis on that question, uh, YouTube versus Twitch. Um, I do have a strong opinion on the matter um, and I have experimented extensively with both platforms and I once was a full-time Twitch streamer myself through TGN, I've done a lot of work on Twitch, and I've seen a lot of people kind of grow up or not. Here's the video right here, I just linked it in chat, about Twitch versus YouTube, so check out this video if you haven't already. Uh, I give the full analysis, I guess you could say, or a more complete analysis of what I think. 
But the short version of that um, here is, uh, the short version of that is that I think um, it's all a matter of how much time you have and what you enjoy doing with your time. It's a time difference. So Twitch rewards people that um, listening to you in order to gain knowledge in regards to the YouTube platform, you appreciate me. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, Bryston. And thanks for watching on Periscope. That's awesome. Um, so Twitch is a platform that rewards people that have hardcore uptime. So if you have tons of time to burn, then Twitch can work out for you. You only grow on this platform when you are live. If you're not live, you aren't growing and someone else is growing instead of you. So Twitch is an extremely brutal, brutal hierarchical system of being discovered uh, that is just, it's just so brutal. It is the ultimate in like, evolution if you will it's the ultimate in people battling each other it's the ultimate in who wants it more twitch is the ultimate battle of that so when you click any of these trends uh to go navigate who's live on twitch whoever's live more wins and whoever's the most popular at any given time is winning if you aren't already popular being discovered on Twitch is nearly impossible because the big boys are winning. So the way that you get up the list, these are the big boys up here, the way that you get up this list on Twitch to be discovered and to be suggested is by being live when everybody else turns their stream off. So all of the guys like you that are seeking to become popular, you're down here at the bottom. You're down here getting 15 viewers, 30 viewers, 60 viewers. These are all the people that are not being discovered. So in order for these people at the very bottom of the list, these essentially people that are currently nobodies in terms of like notoriety on Twitch, I'm not saying they're nobodies as people, but in terms of notoriety on Twitch and people knowing who they are and having a large audience, they're nobodies right now and they're trying to grow. In order for this channel, for example, to climb the list and to go up, it's a very simple concept. They need to be live more often than everyone else. And or, and there's other options too. They can be better at the games that they're playing. They can have better overlays. They can be more engaging with chat. All of those things can help them climb the list, of course. They can help them climb it faster. But the number one way for them to climb the list faster is to just be live longer and to invest more time into Twitch. And once these other channels stop going live, then they climb a little bit more, because they're still live. And then more of these channels that are above them stop going live, and they climb the list more. And it's all about acquiring viewers and acquiring leftovers, if you will, to climb the hierarchical list of who's popular on Twitch and who's not. So it's all about uptime. And as you can see, there's a sudden jump in like the 50 viewers to 90, suddenly 100. Notice there's 150. And notice there's a major threshold that gets crossed over here on Twitch where it goes 200, 300, 400, 800, 1,000, 4,000, 10,000. All of a sudden, kind of the top of the hierarchy on any given game on Twitch is full of the big boys where 70% of the viewership is going to the top channels on Twitch. Twitch rewards alphas that are live more often than not. That's how you get discovered is by going live more than anyone else. Steven, great to see you on Periscope, by the way. So uptime is how you win on Twitch. Now YouTube, on the other hand, is, is a different story. In YouTube gaming, on the other hand, which YouTube gaming doesn't really exist, it's kind of just like, a vanity brand that doesn't actually have traction. Game, we'll say gaming on YouTube is a different story. You can create live content on YouTube and you can go live for an hour and a half on YouTube. And then that live stream can be released as a video later and you can be discovered. Because YouTube actually has an audience that is magnitudes larger than Twitch. Twitch is a nobody platform in comparison to YouTube in terms of how large the audience is. Twitch's audience is in the tens of millions to my knowledge, 
Uh, YouTube's audience is in the billions. So there's just a massive difference there. Twitch is like nothing. It is a fly on the wall. It is a speck in the universe in comparison to YouTube. I'm not saying it's not culturally relevant. I'm not saying Twitch isn't a vibrant and thriving platform for creators, but it is basically a nothing burger, numbers-wise, in comparison to YouTube and the discovery that YouTube can provide. And if you look at a um, channel like uh, Typical Gamer, for example, Typical Gamer is probably making more money than 99% of Twitch streamers, and he goes live for shorter periods of time on YouTube. As you can see, he goes live for two hours. One hour and 10 minutes, two hours, two hours, two hours and 40 minutes, two hours and 56 minutes. Whereas the top Twitch streamers, on the other hand, are having to go live for 14 hours, for 12 hours, for 16 hours to stay on top and to climb over everyone else on the way. So YouTube allows for shorter streaming, it allows for more discovery, and there are just way more opportunities to succeed on YouTube because of the size of the audience and the flexibility it provides you versus Twitch. I would say that YouTube, in terms of growing and being discovered, and the amount of time you have to invest in YouTube versus Twitch, I'd say that YouTube is by far, hands down, the strongest bet uh, in terms of being discovered. It's algorithm, it has the largest audience, it has the best discovery algorithm, it doesn't demand as much of your time, it allows for more flexibility, it just is a completely superior platform for creators. And that's why it's by far, it dwarfs every other platform for creators on the planet. Like that's just fact. So that's my opinion, you can watch the full video, but that's just opinion, that's just my opinion on YouTube versus Twitch. That's not me crapping on Twitch. I like Twitch a lot. I think Twitch is fantastic. I think Mixer is also growing and Mixer's great. I think Instagram's great. I think all of these platforms are great, but YouTube is the king in terms of creator platforms for so many reasons. It is years ahead of competitors, and these other competitors have to be in a small niche in order to compete with YouTube because YouTube is just better overall in almost every regard. I hope that answered your question, Dark Chiron. So, Ezra Slayton, let's go ahead and give him some feedback, one of my wonderful patrons. Let's give Ezra Slayton some feedback on his graphics on his channel. So I'd like to get your opinions in chat. Let's help out a fellow creator, a growing creator on YouTube. Ezra Slayton has changed his banner, which I like, to more clearly communicate what his channel is about. Let me zoom in so that you guys can see. Oh, actually it doesn't change the banner size. So really quick, let's give Ezra some feedback on his banner and let me know what you think of this banner. Does this clearly communicate what the channel is about when you read this banner? I'll take a moment, let me know in chat, yes, if it does clearly communicate what the channel is about. And if you don't feel that it clearly communicates what his channel is about, uh, go ahead and say what seems unclear to you about the banner. Take a few moments to do that and then uh, we'll, we'll uh, discuss for Ezra Slayton's benefit. Cool? Let's do it. Be honest, be brutally honest. I do this for all sorts of people that come to my live streams. We review, now Ezra, in this case, he's a one of my $25 patrons. So he gets, you know, uh, fast passes to get follow-ups in these streams. But let's be honest with Ezra and let's help him improve. So is this banner an improvement over what he had previously? And is it clear what his channel is about? Let me know what you think in chat. I'm gonna take a sip of coffee, cheers. That blue line is my line, by the way. You don't have a ton of time to stream on a regular basis, so you appreciate that feedback? Sure, you got a dark Chiron. Um, I mean, and one other thing you can consider with streaming while you guys are typing into chat, on all platforms, by the way, I can see chat on all platforms. Um, as you can see, we've got Periscope folks, we've got Twitch folks, Mixer folks, all watching right now, but, um, if you can only stream for like an hour, an hour and a half a day, YouTube is a vastly superior platform to Twitch, Mixer, and anything else. Vastly superior. If you wanna grind 16 hours a day, 
just go to Twitch and grind. <laughs> go grind on Twitch. You'll make it, eventually. If you just grind every day. Grind, 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 grind. And that's why Twitch is a young man's game. If you have a family, if you have a full-time job, it's almost impossible to grow on Twitch because you don't have time. Twitch eats your time. That's what that platform does. It gobbles people's time. All right, here's some feedback in chat. Woods677 says, your guessing is channel has to do something with the stock market? That's great feedback. That's really, really good. Um, okay, thank you for your feedback, guys. Yeah, his channel is about affiliate marketing. So, um, I feel like the banner um, could be a little bit more clear, Ezra Slayton, about what your channel is about. I see it, so you have affiliate marketing, how-tos, and case studies. How to what? Oops, that uh, mark is a little bit huge. How to what? Maybe that could be more clear. How to do what? I don't understand what we're learning how to do. Case studies of what? Like success stories or I, I don't know what that is. Affiliate marketing, I know what affiliate marketing is and most people that are gonna come to your channel know what affiliate marketing is. So out of those three tabs, affiliate marketing is clear. Um, more money, more options is interesting. Um, I think that that is cool. Maybe it could say something like make more money, more options. I feel like the real appeal of affiliate marketing is that you can make more money in less time. You can make more money on the side. You can make money doing what you're already doing. You can expand your revenue. So it's all about making more money with less time. And I feel like that's the value of affiliate marketing or one of the values of affiliate marketing where you can make money with what you're already doing. So just saying a generic more money, more options is not clear. So I think the true value of your channel is yes, money is one of the values of your channel and I think that you've identified that. You can help people make more money. And yes, if you have more money, you have more options, that's true. But I also think your banner needs to say that it can save you, that you can, save time, possibly. I like the fact that you're opening up options for people, for sure. And I think that um, this component needs to be here. I think time needs to be communicated more effectively. You're gonna save people time. They can more effectively use their time. Money is good, options are good, but what you're gonna teach people is how to use their time more effectively. That is the value of Ezra Slayton. I'm pretty sure that's what I would I would add there. Uh, here's some more feedback in chat as well. Let's pull up this feedback for you, Ezra Slayton. Um, you would drop the how-to in case study, says the family bovine. Got it. I answered your question earlier, by the way, family bovine, when you weren't here. Sorry about 100,000 subscribers and the different levels. It should be pointers that help people they know about. Yep, that's a really good point. Um, Pointers, yeah, you're, you're providing the expertise. You're gonna save people time. You're gonna give them a shortcut to the right answers about affiliate marketing. You think if we're talking about money and marketing, it has to do with Lato font or Open Sans would be more relevant. Okay, that's a good piece of feedback on this banner. That's a great piece of feedback. Um, um, Wood says, yeah, I don't really get the banner. Just reading marketing, you immediately think that the stock market, because you don't know what affiliate is. So there you go. So if he explained through this banner how um, you could save time through affiliate marketing or you could get more options to make money, maybe that would make it a bit more clear. Uh, Family Bovine says the photography is good, but the background needs something irrelevant to affiliate marketing. Graphs going up, that kind of thing. Yep, oh, you did hear it earlier. You were here, Family Bovine. Excellent, you did hear the feedback earlier. Great, and let me just pull up one more time, the king of uh, affiliate marketing, so you guys can check them out. It's not typical gamer. Uh, let me pull up the king, Pat Flynn. And I would just continue to pull inspiration from Pat Flynn and the value that he's providing through his banner. He makes it, I think, very clear. Uh, oh, there you go. He, he's doing a lot of things I just talked about. You make more money. So he's got money here. You save more time. There you go and he, you're gonna help more people. So those are his values that he's providing. It's very clear what's happening there. And the background's green, like the color of money uh, here. 
and he's a friendly dude. So uh, for me, it's it feels a bit more straightforward about what his channel is about as opposed to going to your channel. It just seems less clear. Okay, so I think that that is uh, some feedback. So once again, take inspiration from Pat Flynn. Um, I think that if you added element of time here, saving time, um, that that would help. Cool, let's go ahead and give you some feedback on your thumbnails. That was one of the things that you wanted uh, to know. Um, I, you are a family man, so that's good. I don't think you need to include your family there um, in your banner, it's okay. Uh, but including something that has to do with making money or affiliate or some sort of reference to money making uh, in the background would be important on that banner. Let's take a look at a thumbnail. We'll do one quick thumbnail analysis. And then we're going to take a look at Sisbro's live stream and give him some feedback on his live stream format. I'm a bit of an expert on that. And uh, I've been creating a lot of different formats. Look at that. Check this out. I can do this later. I've got a vertical cell phone scene now. I've got a horizontal cell phone scene I used yesterday. So I've been studying a lot about live streaming formats using Streamlabs OBS, and I've got some feedback later. For any of you that are interested in recording or live streaming formats, um, we're gonna give feedback later. I've been really building that out here with my setup. And uh, Sispros, we're gonna give you some feedback before this stream is out on that. Quick feedback on his thumbnails. So let's just take uh, this thumbnail into account, everyone. Let's look at this one right here. Let me know what you think of this thumbnail and title combination that you cannot see, that you can now see, uh, in chat. What do you think he could do to improve this thumbnail uh, and title combination? Is it clear what this video is about? Is it clear why you should watch this video? Can you see the different elements of this video right here properly? This one right here. Okay, let me know what you think. I'll give you a few minutes to provide your feedback in chat, and then I'll provide my feedback to Ezra Slayton. And thank you to all of you guys that are helping your fellow creators through these streams. I think it's great. And I love what Ezra, Ezra Slayton is doing because affiliate marketing can help people uh, put together a college fund for their kids. They can help people raise money for charity. They can help them get economic freedom. They can help somebody with a disability that can only work from home, uh, you know, uh, expand their life and, and live a more full life and be more accomplished. So there's so many good things about affiliate marketing that I personally love to support. So I really want to put a little extra effort into Ezra Slayton. Um, you, Bryston really likes the uh, Pat Flynn banner we showed a moment ago. It's compelling. The white text is hard to read on some thumbnails is uh, some feedback here. So the white text is a little washed uh, on that white YouTube background. That's some really good uh, feedback. Dark Chiron says, yeah, if you have black outlines on this text, uh, otherwise it's hard to read. Sis bros, we're getting to you soon. That's right, buddy. And perhaps try making thumbnails without his face. Perhaps a thumbnail that shows what platforms he's making money from is uh, another feedback from Bryston. You think you could have something a brief saying whether August was good, bad, shocking, predictable, dark Chiron, that's a really good point. Um, that's a really, really good point. Um, Costless Gaming, what's up, Costless Gaming? It's good to see you. Thank you for joining in YouTube chat. It says August 2018, and it says income report, so it's clear to you, says Woods. Got it. Thank you for all of that feedback, creators. Um, I'll provide my feedback on this thumbnail. So I agree with the feedback that the text is hard to read over here. Um, I think that the white of that text is too similar to the white background of YouTube, and it doesn't stand out from his room there. Uh, so one thing that you can do, and I am not a uh, the, the graphic design guru of a lifetime, but let me just show you a thumbnail I made on my channel recently. Oh God, that's my face really huge. It's not an amazing thumbnail. Um, but it's an okay thumbnail. And let me just show you a tactic I used as an amateur graphic designer. So see this thumbnail right here above my head? See what I did there on the side um, here? In fact, let me just pull up Canva so you guys can check out Canva and I'll just show you the graphics technique. Um, this is my Canva account. Hopefully I don't reveal anything too crazy. Uh, so here is my Canva project. And as you can see on this thumbnail I released yesterday, um, if your background is too light, what you can do is you can choose a gradient image and you can drop that 
on the side where your text is going to be like I've done here. And as you can see, this is the way that this image actually looks. It looks like that, right? Let me zoom in so you guys can see it. So this is a graphics technique all of you guys can use to just quickly have uh, text stand out on your thumbnails. And so what you can do is you can drop a gradient in and as you can see this gradient, it goes from dark blue to white on one side. Here, I'll show you the entire, oops. This is just a gaming thumbnail I made yesterday with my 8020. As you can see, it's a gradient, right? Gradients make it look a little bit more natural. And then what you can do with that image is you can go ahead and drop the transparency down. And so what it does is it allows your background to still exist there, but it gives you some nice contrast. It gives you some darkness behind your white text. So despite the fact that my text on the thumb or my image on the thumbnail still has white elements, it has white lights here on the lights. It still has white on the ground. It has white here. It has white all over the place. You're still able to see the white of my text without an outline on my text. So that is an alternative graphics method that you can use, uh, all of you guys, if you want to have a background behind your text and you don't wanna do outlines because you think the outlines are gross. And the more you want that text to stand out, the more you can kind of increase the uh, opaqueness of that background to make it stand out more. I mean, you guys can see the difference, right? Without that background, that's what it looks like. And that's kind of more or less what um, Ezra Slayton's thumbnail kind of looks like here. It doesn't really stand out from the background, but if you added some sort of coloring like this and added a transparency, all of a sudden it would stand out more without using one of those bubbly looking outlines. So I think this graphics technique, very simple, even an amateur graphic designer like me can do it and you can do that and everybody else out there can use this technique as well, okay? So I think that that would be very helpful in Ezra Slate and improving that thumbnail, okay? So uh, the other part here is I don't understand clearly what the value of this video is really, like it's your income report. And I agree with Dark Chiron, did it go up? Did it go down? Maybe you could tease whether it went up or it went down. You could tease what we're going to learn from this income report. Um, I don't see what the value of looking at a report is. Are you gonna teach us how to read an income report? Are you gonna teach us how to learn from an income report? Is there something new here? Or is there like, I don't understand what the value is, okay? So make it more clear what the value of this is. Just saying income report is saying, it's basically like the most generic value you can provide, which is, hey, look at this. Hey, look at this is not value. It's just telling people to look at it. Um, Kiss, it's great to see you in YouTube chat. Um, dollar signs and charts or growth or something, yeah. Just, hey, look at this, income report is not valuable. Is it new? Is it best? Are we learning something? Is there some kind of challenge that you overcame this month? Etc. I keep going back to those values, communicate value there. And so guys, feel free to steal my graphics technique where you add that gradient right here on the right hand side. Feel free to steal that technique. I think it looks great and it um, makes it easy to put a background image on there uh, and to have it really stand out depending on the background image. As you guys can see, it just makes a huge impact in making text really stand out and pop on a thumbnail. Cool? Um, beautiful. Hopefully that was helpful to you guys. If it was, be sure to follow me on my different avenues. Follow me on Twitch, on Mixer, on YouTube. Let's freaking go. If you guys are not already following me on Twitch, I will uh, link my Twitch to you right now. Um, and perhaps if you guys are on Twitch, you can catch my live streams there. So let me just share with you my Twitch uh, avenue. I'll go ahead and link it in chat here. I'm obviously live streaming on Twitch at the moment. And follow me on Twitch if you're not already. Come on, let's freaking go. There I am looking at myself, looking at myself on Twitch. And everybody who's watching on Twitch right now, speak up and chat. Come on. All right, beautiful. So let's go ahead and give Sisbros, a live streaming YouTuber, feedback on what he can do to improve his live streaming layout. Thank you to everybody who gave Ev Ezra Slayton uh, feedback on his uh, on his format. So let's go ahead and pull up Sisbros. Um, this is a YouTuber that just recently uh, hit that uh, 6,000 subscriber milestone. So congratulations to Sisbro, one of my patrons. Congratulations, amigo, breaking 6K. That's what's up. Uh, a growing creator, a very uh, a hustler, creating freaking Facebook groups all day, 
covering so many different games, having kind of some lower end equipment and still cranking it out. Robin, you blind. Yeah, Ro I, lo <laughs> I love your name, Robin, you blind. Thanks for joining on uh, Twitch chat. Robin, you blind right up there, ladies and gentlemen. Good to see you. I love your name. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for joining. Uh, by the way, I can see all chats, right? So I can see all chats on all platforms. This is not a YouTube only stream. <laughs> it's good to see you, Robin, you blind. Okay, so Sysbros, we're gonna give him feedback on his stream layout. That is something that, that's a, one of the questions that he had for us. So let me get you guys uh, to give him feedback on that. Uh, he wants feedback on the interaction with viewers, how often he should stream. Let's cover your programming strategy and upcoming feedback, Sysbros. Let's just give you feedback right now on your stream layout, and then we'll cover uh, your overarching strategy, and we'll re 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 we will revisit that soon, okay? Um, so let's take a look at his layout. Here is, here is his layout, and let me zoom out, and you guys can take a look at it. And let me go ahead and mute here, and I'll go um, full screen. Am I blocking? Okay, I'm gonna eliminate myself for a moment so that you guys can see, um, oops, so that you guys can see his layout. There we go. And I'm just gonna hit play here and just watch Sis Bro's streaming layout here, okay? Just take a look at it, take it in. I know a number of you guys are expert uh, live streamers. You live stream regularly. This is his layout uh, right above me. So let me know your feedback on his layout. Um, the different elements that we wanna give him feedback on are he's got this scrolling banner right here. He's got this goal at the top. He's got, looks like a stream boss here. He's got chat right here as well. Um, and he's got his webcam right here. And he's got this kind of box over on the side here, which is separating his gameplay from everything else. So provide your feedback in chat, just at, from a viewer standpoint, what do you think about this? What do you think should be changed? Let me know in chat. I will read your feedback. Sysbros is going to be reading it. He's in chat right now. And then I'll provide my feedback on how I think Sysbros can improve his layout. Okay? Grizzly Gaming, it's good to see you in chat. All right, hit him with it. Be brutally honest. Look, Sysbros, Sysbros is a part of this community. Sysbros knows what's up, okay? So be brutally honest about his layout here and what you think can be improved. He can take it. He's a grown man here. He can take the honest feedback, okay? All right, are you guys, you guys good? All right, I'm going to reappear and start reading uh, your questions here about his lay, or your feedback about his layout, and then I'm gonna provide my feedback on his layout as it, uh, we're gonna go ahead and hit pause here because that's extremely distracting. Okay, great. Uh, to give feedback on his layout. Okay, Dark Chiron says right off the bat, you need to keep chat from bleeding over into the gameplay. I agree. So this would be point number one, sis bros. Um, right here, I think is what he's talking about. Oops, um, right here. See this little bit of chat that's bleeding out into the gameplay right here. Uh, what you can do is on your chat box in OBS or Exploit or Streamlabs OBS, set the width of your chat to be a bit smaller than it currently is, so the chat can't doesn't bleed out there. So thank you for that feedback. That's a little bit sloppy. It's a little bit sloppy right here, so crank that back in, okay? And also, I would say on that point, to continue that, your chat is bleeding into this image that's behind your head here, which makes it here. I'm just gonna remove myself here from the image so I can uh, I can share a little bit more about this layout. The chat here is bleeding into your head here, and it's really distracting, right? The chat is like, this image should be separating you and your webcam from chat. And instead, chat is bleeding into this image. So what I would recommend here is to keep your chat inside of a box that's only in this area and select better width to keep it there and better height to keep it there so that this chat right here doesn't bleed over and this chat right here doesn't bleed over, okay? So that's, that's feedback number one for you there. So thank you for that uh, feedback uh, from chat. Another thing that I would consider, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit play again so that the uh, overlay kind of disappears. The laptop goal up top is too small 
I can barely read it. And so what you can do is, in the scrolling text here, I, I think that you should choose one or the other. So you have this stream boss, you have a goal, and you have a scrolling ticker. If you want to have all three of those elements, you, need, you can't pack them all into the corner. Um, it's just too much to pack into this corner. It's too much information to pack into one section of the screen, okay? So I think if you want to include all of those elements, you need to use a template for all of those items. And it looks like you are, are already using Streamlabs, which is great. Let me go ahead and just show you some of the Streamlabs OBS templates that you could use to, um, to improve. I'm gonna go ahead and reappear here that you could use to consolidate those items in a, um, in a way that isn't so distracting, it isn't so packed into the freaking corner, okay? So where I'm about to show you some streamception right now, uh, where I'm gonna show you the stream of my stream of my stream. But really quick, if you guys are interested in Streamlabs OBS, uh, I've got a link right here to you guys. It is a free software, it's what I use to um, you can't see the stuff up top, sorry. I had it a little bit cropped, uh, but yeah, you guys couldn't see it. So there is stuff up here that you guys were unable to see earlier with his goal as well as his scrolling ticker. You guys couldn't see it earlier, sorry about that. Uh, but there's the link to Streamlabs OBS and let me go ahead and pull Streamlabs OBS over so you guys can check it out. And you're gonna see some Streamception here, but bear with me. Within Streamlabs OBS, whoa, Streamception, you can go ahead and click Themes. And within your themes, there are so many gorgeous pre-made themes that you can check out um, that can consolidate all of those different elements that you're doing into, um, into one section. And right now I'm using a theme called Vivid. So what you wanna do is just take a look at the most installed themes using Streamlabs OBS, and let me show you what I'm talking about. These themes will automatically have top donator, latest donation, recent subscription, all of that stuff uh, here at the top, um, as you can see here, consolidated in a beautiful UI. And also it'll put you in a nice little webcam in the corner, and it also has um, some scenes um, that you can use to have like starting your stream soon or be right back as well. So there's a number of different presets that I would recommend you use, Sysbros, that you should experiment with to consolidate all of those different elements. And Mint Dusk is one that is really, really popular that has a lot of different elements that you can include, okay? And another option here is um, it's got live chat here in the corner. As you can see, it's got latest follower, top dono, all of that stuff. It's got a nice webcam element as well. And it also has follower notifications and alerts that happen up here at the top. So there's almost an unlimited number of templates that you guys can check out in Streamlabs OBS that can consolidate those elements without having to hire a graphic designer to design them from scratch. And this would just be number one suggestion to you Sysbros is start using Streamlabs OBS immediately. Let me just show you, I know you're gonna see Streamception here, sorry. Um, let me go ahead and make this chat go away. But um, uh, basically I've got my scenes using um, Streamlabs OBS where I've got this webcam scene right here um, on my first scene, I've got my second screen scene, which is screen share. Um, you guys are getting screenception. And also using these templates, I can do a vertical phone integration. I can also do a horizontal phone integration. And all of the different elements that I was talking about a moment ago, all of the different things that you saw, uh, all of those different themes, all of those themes are here as different elements. My alert box, my donation goals, my event list, are all pulled from Streamlabs OBS from these themes. And you can pick and choose different widgets that you would like to install on your stream and it will look professional right out the gate. You can choose whether you want notifications, whether you want a webcam box, etc., And it will just blow away the quality that you currently have on your live stream, okay? And um, it'll blow away the quality that you currently have on your live stream. So go ahead, select those widgets, uh, select uh, the different templates, and it will increase your quality instantly in a way that is significant. Once you plug your stream into one of those templates, 
you'll start looking professional. You'll start looking like you have it together, kind of like I do on my stream. Wow, fellow, it's great to see you in chat. Good to see you on uh, Periscope, okay? Do that, sis bros. Come back to us. We'll give you feedback on that Streamlabs OBS template uh, that you have selected, and uh, we'll go from there. Miss Drevis says, do you have a Streamlabs OBS tutorial? You're clueless on how to use it. Um, perhaps I could make one. If you guys want me to make one of those, I can. Um, if that's really important to you guys, I'm happy to make a tutorial. I use Streamlabs OBS templates for everything I do here. Uh, this is a restream chat. That is a template there though. The goal up there is a template. My alerts, I'll just go ahead and play an alert right now. These alerts that show up above me are a template and um, etc. So I definitely use the templates, but also I mix in custom elements like these outlines and different inputs as well to make it look um, the way that I want it to look. And it looks like my video background stopped playing. That's weird. What happened video background? There you go, now it's playing again, whoa video background beautiful there it is okay so that's my feedback to you sis bros and we will get into your live streaming strategy a bit deeper on a future stream go ahead and change your layout and then we will revisit next time okay you got it no problem streamlabs obs for the win i'm telling you it's a great way to go from kind of like amateur streamer or small streamer or starting streamer who doesn't have money for a professional graphic designer to looking pro like that Okay, that's gonna be it for this live stream, everybody. I have a coaching call uh, with one of my uh, patrons right after this, one of my bigger patrons. So if you guys are interested in having me review your channel, if you're interested in getting a fast pass for one of these live streams, and if you're just interested in supporting me as I help creators grow and chase the dream, I'm gonna go ahead and post a link into all chats right now to become my patron. Uh, become my patron today. I'm going to have a channel review for one of my more recent patrons tomorrow And then we're gonna do one for um, Who are we gonna do tomorrow? We're gonna do Jonathan Tetro tomorrow late sleeper tomorrow and the next week We're gonna do Spooby. So if you're interested in becoming my patron, uh, we broke the $500 mark. I've got a $5 level that makes it easy for you guys to get in there and to ask me questions and to get more customized advice. I also have a $25 level, which I think provides a lot of value, where I do legendary channel reviews. You get fast pass questions to be answered just like on this stream. And um, I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching, like the coaching I'm about to do right now so uh right after this live stream so anyway if you guys are interested in signing up jump in there obviously otherwise i try to answer as many questions as i can in chat on social media etc i answer hundreds of questions every week but becoming my patron is the best way to kind of guarantee i can help you and, and help prioritize you and help you in a more custom way all right Thank you so much for joining 10 a.m. tomorrow. I'll see you right back here on the stream on Twitch, Mixer, Facebook, YouTube, and Periscope. Thank you for joining. Keep creating, keep being amazing, and you can reach that 100,000 subscriber goal in no time. I mean it. I've done it myself on multiple channels, and you can do it too. All right, have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios, amigos.